Well, now that you've used the Open Rocket software to design your rocket, it's time to go on to the next phase, which is simulation. Simulation is that part of the engineering design process where you take a prototype and you test it to see how it performs. In this case, instead of taking rockets out to the field and flying them to see how they perform, we can do it on the computer, and so that will speed up the design process. So in this testing process, you will fly your rockets virtually on the computer and see if they meet the requirements that you wanted in design. And if they don't do what you wanted in design, then you'll get a chance to redesign them. So this is part of that iterative design process in engineering. And the neat thing about this is we can do it on the computer, so you'll have a really good rocket built that you can fly and it should perform well. So let's get on to our simulation. Well, I'm anxious to see how my rocket's going to fly, so let's get some simulations done on it. I've opened up my rocket in Open Rocket. Here's the rocket I designed. should look familiar. The first thing I'm going to do is come up here to Motor Configuration and check to make sure that I have the B64 loaded. If I didn't have the B64 loaded for some reason, you can load the new motor, but it should be there. And then I'm going to click over here in Flight Simulations. Now you'll probably have a screen that looks like this. It'll have a blank simulation in it. It'll say Simulation 1. There won't be any data here. If for some reason you don't have that, just click on New Simulation here and it'll open up a simulation. So if you have this blank simulation here, just click on Edit Simulation. That'll bring up this menu. This is the menu where we set all the launch conditions. We're going to set up first the launch site information, the launch rod information. Let's start with the launch site. I don't know where 28.6 north minus 80 east is, but that's uh, south and east of us. San Angelo is at 31.4 north and about minus 100 east, which is 100 west. The altitude of San Angelo is about 550 meters. That's about 1,800 feet. So that's the location. We have that set up now. Now a launch rod isn't 100 centimeters long. The one we're using is actually only 91 centimeters long. So we need to put that in there. And then we never launch straight up. We always launch at some angle so it's away from the audience or the people that are watching. Five degrees is about the minimum launch angle we want to use, so we want to set that at five. Now let's talk about the winds. So here we have the default value of the average wind speed of two meters per second. That's actually you know pretty much a calm wind. This is West Texas. We don't have calm winds very much, so that's probably not a very good number to use. I'm going to recommend that we put nine meters per second in there. 90 meters per second is about 20 miles an hour. If the winds are a lot higher than that, we probably won't be launching. So this is kind of like our worst case scenario. You can leave the rest of these the same, the standard deviation, the turbulence intensity, just tell you how much the winds vary about that nine meter per second average, and you can leave those the same, that'll be fine. Be sure to save this as default so that it's there for your other simulations. You can close this now. And now we set up all parameters, we're ready to run simulation one. So we're gonna click here, run simulation. And that was fast, but it ran the simulation, but uh oh here, we have a red exclamation point here. That doesn't look good. Let's double click on this and it says, error occurred. The stage began to tumble under thrust. So it sounds like our rocket was not stable. So let's go look and see what happened during the flight. And we can do that by just double clicking on this. Double click there, uh, that'll open up this window. And this window is where we do all the different plots of the simulations. There's a whole bunch of different plots here we can use. We're only gonna look at three of them. One we're gonna look at first, the most important one is stability versus time. So we wanna see when did our rocket go unstable and what's the conditions there. I wanna click here to launch rod clearance over here so it plots that on the plot. Everything else you can leave the same. And you're gonna click plot and that'll open up this plot. Slide this over here. So this is our simulation and we have three different things plotted on here. The green is the location of the center of gravity and that's plotted over here to this right hand menu. So notice the location of the center of gravity is that number is decreased. In other words, the center of gravity is getting closer to the nose cone as time goes on. Well, how does the center of gravity change? Well, as a rocket burns, all that propellant that's in the engine is, is going away out the back of the rocket. So the back of the rocket gets lighter. So the center of gravity moves forward. So that's interesting. That makes sense. Our center of pressure starts out here really low. In fact, below what we designed our rocket for. 
and then it does come up here and get high, but it's really low at first, and it's low at first because early in the flight, the rocket's not going very fast, so there's not a lot of wind to push against the fins, so the center of pressure is actually not exactly what we calculated. In fact, it's closer to the nose. But let's zoom in at the beginning of this to see what went wrong, because that's where we're concerned about this. So I'm going to move it, zoom in just on you know the first second of flight, because that's where we're going to have problems. And let's take a look at our stability margin, because that's what we're really interested in. That tells us how stable our rocket is. So this first line here is when the motor ignited. And the second line here is when the rocket cleared the ronch lod. And so that's the first time we start getting center pressure and stability numbers. And notice when it cleared the launch rod here, the red is my stability margin. It was actually a little below zero. It was, it was slightly negative. In other words, when the rocket cleared the launch rod, it actually had the center of pressure in front of the center of gravity. And no wonder our rocket went unstable. So that's not a good thing. I don't need to look at any other data here. I know I got to redesign my rocket. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this and I'm going to come back to the rocket design and I'm going to redesign the rocket. So if I'm going to make it more stable, I'm going to have to uh, change the fins or make it longer. So I'm going to choose to change the fins. Let me open up our fin set and click on shape. And what I'm going to do is I'll make the fins bigger and I'm going to make them go farther back. So I'm just going to make them bigger. I'm going to make them go, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I made a new point. I just want to drag the old point. So I'm going to make them go farther back. So all I'm doing is making them bigger, really. I think, uh, I don't know. My stability caliber uh, just went up to a little over two. Uh, remember, I designed it for 1.5 before. That looks a little better. So let's see if, if that works. I'll close that. I'll go back to my flight simulations. Now this red dot here just is telling me that this simulation is no longer valid because it was run for a different rocket. So I'm going to create a new simulation. I'm going to come back in here at my launch conditions, make sure everything's fine. Since I saved this all as a default, everything there looks good, so I can close that. I can click up here and run simulations. Okay, that simulation ran. I noticed that I got a green check mark there, so everything looks good. That's great. Let's double click on this and see what it actually looks like. Okay, again, the first thing we're going to look at is stability versus time. So I'm going to plot that one. Bring that over here. Again, I'm going to zoom in just on the very beginning of that because that's the part I'm interested in. And now let's see what's happening. Okay, well now notice when the launch rod was cleared, I now have a positive stability margin. It's not as big as I designed. It's only 0.25, but at least I have a positive stability margin. So that makes me think my rocket's going to do better. That looks good. At least I have a stable margin. So I'm going to close that one. Let's look at the next one which we're interested in, which is the vertical motion versus time. This is going to help us look at when the ejection charge occurred and how that worked. So I'll click on that one. I'll have this plot. So I have three things again plotted here. I have the altitude versus time. That's the red one. And notice the peak altitude I got up here was, oh, 180 meters here. 180 meters, that's almost 600 feet. That's pretty cool. Rocket went 600 feet high. The green one is the velocity. The velocity is plotted to this right scale over here. The maximum velocity was almost 150 meters per second. See, it's in meters per second, you can see. 150 meters per second is about 165 miles an hour. That rocket was moving pretty fast. And notice that the peak velocity occurs right when motor burnout occurs, because after that, it's going to be slowing down. The blue one's my acceleration. That follows the thrust curve of the motor pretty much at the beginning. And then when the motor burns out, the acceleration goes negative, because now you've got all the wind resistance is slowing the rocket down. But the big thing we want to look at on this one is where this recovery device fired. Now notice our recovery device or our ejection charge fired just a little bit before apogee. Not too much, that's okay. But the thing we're really concerned about is how fast was the rocket going then? Because if the rocket was going too fast, our streamer could get just torn right off the rocket. And we'd really like to make sure the rocket's going less than 20 meters per second or so. 
So I'm going to follow this line down to the velocity and it hits the velocity right there. And if I follow that over the right, it looks like it's going a little less than 10 meters per second. That's a good number. It's less than 20. In fact, it's less than half of 20. So that looks good. Uh, looks like our rocket is stable. Looks like the ejection of charge is current close to apogee. And it looks like it's not moving too fast at ejection. So we're going to close that. The last thing we're going to look at is the flight side profile. This is going to show us where our rocket flies. And so we're going to click on that. I'm going to plot that. And we'll get this plot. Uh, this plot zero is where we launched at. The positive numbers are to the east. The negative numbers are to the west. So here's our rocket. And it turns and flies into the wind. Because this is a really high wind now, remember. And this is where motor burnout occurs. Here's where the ejection of charge occurs. It goes a little higher. And then it comes down. And it looks like it lands about 30 meters away from us. So that's about 100 feet away from us. That's not too bad. I think we could walk that far. We probably could find that rocket. So this looks like a good simulation. I think this is all going to work. I've now got a design that's going to work for my rocket. It's going to be stable. I notice that it's a good thing I did my simulations because my first design, even though it had a stability factor of 1.5, at least under these winds, it was uh, not stable. If you want to run more simulations, you can. You can just add a new simulation. You might, for instance, want to run one at a lower wind speed. So something like 5 meters per second is closer to like 10 or 12 miles per hour. That's more like an average wind speed that we might run. You can close that and you can run that simulation. And if you look at the data for that one, let's again look at our stability versus time plot for that one. Again, let's look at the early part of it. And here, notice that we have a much higher stability number at launch when it leaves the launch road right here. Um, it, it's up to 0.75, it looks like. The other one was uh, qu quite a bit lower than that. So the same rocket, when we launch it under lower wind conditions, is going to be more stable. So I think we have a good design. Under the worst wind conditions, it's going to fly OK. Under the lighter conditions, it's going to fly even better. It looks like we got a good design. And it sure is a good thing that we had this simulator so we could launch our rocket on the simulator before we actually launched it out on the site. Because if the winds were high, it was not going to be stable, our original design. Before we leave this page, let's take a look at this table and the important data that's on it. These are just numbers that come off the plots, but it's a great summary. And you're going to want to write these down. And you're going to want to compare them to the data you get in the field when we launch your rocket. This first column here that we're going to look at is the velocity off the rod that tells you the velocity the rocket has just as it leaves the launch rod. That has to do with that early stability that we were talking about that was a problem with our first launch. Apogee, the maximum altitude that the rocket reaches. These are all within a few meters of each other, you can see. The velocity of deployment, that's how fast the rocket's moving when the ejection charge fires and it deploys your streamer. The optimum delay is the simulation's estimate of when you would have the perfect delay to deploy the recovery system. Notice that it says it should be around 5 seconds, and the B6 motors is only a B64 and a B66, so we couldn't get 5. We either have to deploy a little early or a little late. Maximum velocity, the fastest speed the rocket reaches, and its maximum acceleration. The time to apogee is how long it takes to get to the highest point and have the total flight time here. And then finally the velocity when it hit the ground. So please record these numbers for your best simulation because we're going to use those to compare to the flight data and we're also going to ask you to enter some of that data in your coursework here for us. All right, well there's one last thing I want to cover and it's real important because it's about your fins. So before you finish, come back here to the fin design and come back here to the shape. And you're going to have to cut fins out to this design. So you're going to need this information to cut your fins out. So the first thing I like to do is come in here. If I'm going to measure these fins and cut them out, I like to round these numbers to their, at least to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, which is a millimeter. I can measure that much. So I'm going to change this to 2. I'm going to change this to 6.5. I'm going to change this to 2.5. I'm going to change this to 6.5 because I really like it to be the same as the previous one. 6.5 and this last one. I'm going to change that to 1.5. So I've rounded these to the nearest millimeter. That'll be easier to measure them. 
Now you either need to take a screenshot of this figure so that you can lay this out because you're going to have to lay this pattern out on a piece of paperboard to make a template for your fins. So either take a screenshot of this so that you have it or write all these numbers down and then make a sketch and write the coordinates of each point so that you can measure these all out and cut out your fin the proper size. Don't forget to do that. It's really important. If you run your whole simulation and you can't make the right kind of fins, then you're in trouble. So you're going to close that. Don't forget to save your file. And you're going to send us your simulation file. And we're going to take a quick look at it before you do your rocket design to make sure it's stable. And if we think there's something that you need to change before you actually do cutting, uh, do things like cut your fin and your body tube, we'll get back to you. So have fun simulating your rocket. Notice that's part of our engineering design process where we designed a prototype and we're testing it to see if it works. In this case, I had to redesign mine. That's a good thing. And if you do this right, you should have a really nice rocket that flies well on launch day. Looking forward to seeing you then. Have fun doing your simulations. Sing along, darling. Time to record.